Hello and welcome to learn system view in five minutes. This is tutorial four. In this tutorial, we will learn how to work with various kind of graphs and what different sinks are there and when to use what kind of sink. Now we go back to tutorial three. In tutorial three, we learn how to you know, run our first data flow simulation by using these uh, sine wave source and a, and a data sink. And after we ran simulation, we got this kind of graph. Now let's understand a little more about how to plot data in system view using different techniques. So last time we went into data set, we right clicked on the sync name and we selected option add to graph and we selected new graph. Now many a times, um, you know, this may not be feasible because you just have too many graphs or you want to do, you know, certain post processing and so on. So another way to plot graph in system view uh, if you recall our you know, tutorial two, everything can be done by simple right click. And when we go to add option, we get uh, you know, different options and one of them is graph. Now, once we select graph there, we can even perform you know, different kind of post-processing on the data. For example, we know we are running a time domain simulation and the sync we are connected is like a oscilloscope sync. So it's collecting the time domain data. However, if you want to see spectrum, we could click on spectrum and here is the sync name. If you have multiple sinks in your design, then all of those sinks which um, you know qualify for this conversion will appear here. Now that is why it's very important to name your sinks properly as soon as you place them. Otherwise, you know everything will be S2, S3, S4 and causing confusion which sink is placed where and it's doing what what uh, you know kind of probing so here um, i will select sign out so as soon as i select sign out you see there is a equation here is basically the post processing equation which gets activated and if we click ok and the graph will get added here it's a post process graph that's the context and the variable is spec that means on the y-axis we will see the name as a spec and you have x and y axis here now once we click ok we can see a simple CW tone um, kind of spectral plot, which is like a classical FFT. And this is what we would expect from that plot. Now, in order to place marker and anywhere in your graph, you can simply click at any point and you will have a marker. In case the marker font needs to be adjusted, you could right click and then select marker font and you can select the font which you want to use for marker as well as the size. So these are some common operation. Notice like uh, how it is important to name your things whenever you place in the design. It's also important to keep renaming these things to represent the right um, you know, nomenclature because if we have 10, 20 things in our design because we are probing at different places and we have graph for each one of them, it will become confusing. So let me rename it and I will call it a sign time domain example so that I identify what exactly it is doing and I will rename this graph as sign FFT. So now by this we have a proper identification of each of the term which we have in our design. Now as we have multiple things everything is overlaying on top of each other and if we want to see multiple things together we can go to window and then we can use this style option. So if we choose style horizontal or vertical it will you know, uh, tile up every window which we have available. In case you don't want to see some window, you can always close it and you can rearrange the, the windows as you need. Now, another thing, uh, if you notice the time domain plot, the X axis looks quite cluttered because the axis is in seconds. And if we want to manipulate our Y axis and X axis, uh, we can double click anywhere in the graph in the in the blank space. And that's where we will get the graph property and we can select the Y axis on an X axis. So here on X axis, if you put an auto scale, you can see unit is seconds. I could go ahead and change it to microsecond or millisecond as, as we need. And once we do that, you know, the, the X axis would be accordingly arranged. We can also completely customize the way we would like to do this. Now, last thing we will talk about is, you know, different type of sinks. So right now I have just used a simple data sync, which works like an oscilloscope. 
but under algorithm design, if you go to category called sings, you can see we have variety of sings. Usually the name is self-explanatory, but typically when you need to collect a time domain kind of data, we use this generic sync. If we want to collect a frequency domain data in our system, we can insert a spectrum analyzer. So these two are the very common uh, you know, kind of things to be used. But as we go along in this tutorial series, I will touch upon, you know, various kind of things and we will end up using a lot of those things in our design. Well, that's your five minutes learning about, you know, graph plotting and, uh, you know, a few details about the thing. See you in next video and thanks for watching.